Look at APB analysis, I like to keep my sidekick open on the right hand side um, or on a second monitor and again right click and show annular labels so that A, B, C, D and E are labelled and um, which relate to each annulus that we'll see in the APB module. So we can click add new case um, to create a new APB case, we'll just call this one demo, just want to save it. Initial condition, uh, initial temperature, let's say that goes from undisturbed all the way to production max. Do we want to calculate wellhead movement? Let's say we do. We'll click it and then we'll ensure that these details are as close to accurate as possible um, to make the model even more accurate. Now we've got each of our annuli across the top here labeled um, and we can select what to do with that annuli. So by default, as you see, when I click across the top, every annuli is sealed, which is worst case. Um, it's often the best way to look at things, but then sometimes we just can't we can't drill ahead. <laughs> if every annulus is sealed, we've got to have some sort of leak off, insert some sort of burst disk, um, have the annulus vented, whatever the case may be. So the A annulus is sealed, and um, the B annulus looks fairly sealed as well here. Um, the C annulus is also sealed. The D annulus, we could argue that we could get some uh, leak off to this formation here. If we did, we'd leak off at minimum fracture pressure and the fracture grading gets pulled automatically from the sidekick. Um, and the data that we entered in on the pull pressure fracture gradient plot a few videos ago, all the way at the beginning. And for E, we could decide whether we wanted to have some uh, leak off here. Um, the argument here would be that we've got a 6,000 foot gap um, with only a thousand foot above. So there's a good chance that we, we could justify leaking off here. Um, I'm not sure if that is in the salt zone, is it? So I'll just click back on the well. What I'll do um, as default, I'll keep all these annuli sealed. Uh, production marks, demo, okay. And what I'll do is I'll take this demo here, I'm gonna copy the case, go into this copy case, um, Change it here. Zero to um, demo leak off. And I'm going to say for my B annulus, I'm going to leak off. And also for that E annulus, I'm going to leak off. Um, there's enough space here to leak off. Click OK. I do, do just want to check where that lines up. So the salts from 8425. So salts here, bottom of salt. OK, you could argue that we cannot leak off in this area because of the salt. Um, but what I've what I've done with this comparison here is I'll show you the differences between the two results. So using control, I can select these two cases. Um, oh, sorry, I should have calculated selected cases, but I've calculated all cases. Um, I can show high data here. What I'll do is I'll show these two demos. Um, and you see that by allowing leak off in the D and E annulus, we also slightly affect the other annuli because of multi annular interaction. If we now go and look at the real world data that was provided to us that we created the load cases from, I'm um, sure high data. Let's look at the production max, production max 50% water cut production depleted. Click OK. And then here's the variances in our APB. Um, and you can see that we're going to have greater problems um, when, when the production Produced fluid is water cut, which is makes logical sense because we'll have higher surface temperature, which heats up that annular space. When we look at the APB results here for the production uh, production max, oh, that was we didn't have wellhead movement calculated. I'll click it here, select it, um, calculate my cases again. And what it also does here is calculates the wellhead movement um, and gives us a total wellhead movement down here, one point one inches. Nothing, nothing great. Um, but we do get some information on required lockdown ring ratings, um, the full body weight of each string, and the net hanger force, which is quite important when we're making decisions on purchasing equipment. And then also if a user wants to go and do their own calculations on any sort of um, pressures above and below packers, you can, have the, you can use these induced forces here to enter in your own calculations. Finally, in the APB results up here, 
instead of looking at this comparison graph, which is one of the only places I do like to look at graphs because I think it's easy to compare um, what changes you make. So as you make sensitivities to each string in this well, we don't really have many options of what we can do. Um, but if we had a well with a load of places where we could leak off, we could leak off the formations um, or potentially if I wanted to say, look at putting in a burst disk somewhere, let's say we want to put a, a burst disk in this B annulus because of these high pressures here. Um, and then the burst disk would just work its way through or the pressure would work its way through as soon as you pop it through the steel. It will just, just shatter the cement. Um, up high here, you then have to have a burst disk also in this string to allow the pressure to escape all the way through. But if we did have a burst disk in there or a collapsed disk, rupture disk, whatever you want to call it, we could then put an APB limit in here. Let's say we had an APB limit of 6,500 um, PSI. I would then calculate the selected case that it was done. We can look at our comparisons and I'm just going to look at these two uh, APB demo ones quickly here. And you see now in this B annulus that um, we've reduced the APB to 6,500 here by introducing a burst disk. And if you need the, the raw data, um, you've got the APB, the change in pressure in this column, um, volumetric change in temperature of the annular fluid, isobaric change in volume, annular change in volume, and delta P over delta T, finally, in this last column. Um, additionally, if you need a little bit of help on the APB module, then we've got some help data here that um, can guide a user if they're not familiar with APB loading or things um, like that. So we're just going to finish up next with some stress comparisons. And then once we've done that, we'll go through a quick summary of navigation.